So welcome everyone to our latest call. Uh, thank you for giving up your time this afternoon. There's a few topics um, that I want to cover off, as I said in, the, in my email yesterday. Um, I think originally we were going to um, have a more detailed discussion around activity list, but there's a few things that I think, um, uh, so a few process related questions um, that uh, it'd be useful for us to discuss as the group um, before we get into more detail on that. Um, so broadly what I want to kind of cover today is um, discussion around, well, to check in with you all about the latest specification revisions um, that I circulated last week and just briefly recap those um, and um, some of the changes to the publishing workflow. Um, and then I also want to have a bit of discussion about how we move forward from here in terms of uh, process and getting a kind of more formal deliverable out of the group. Um, so under that heading, I kind of want to have a discussion around how the specification gets extended um, and what the process would be to get towards a kind of uh, a 1.0 release. Um, I also want to um, kind of uh, recap where we are with the activity list and um, suggest some ways that we can try and push that forward um, to accelerate that work a little bit. Um, I'd always try and keep some time at the end for any other business or topics that people want to raise. So um, please let me know if there's anything you want to cover. Um, so first topic, the specification revisions. Um, so I've, um, I've changed the way that we are uh, publishing um, the specifications. Um, so to date, what, because we've been working um, effectively um, uh, just on a set of kind of editors draft, you know, we we're just kind of working in a kind of iterative way. Um, we've just been working on uh, one one document. So there's there's just been the modeling opportunity spec, which I've just been uh, revising based on feedback and discussion and then just releasing that directly. Um, but as we're starting to get people implementing against the specification, I thought it'd be useful to add a little bit more process. Um, so we now have uh, two separate documents. There is the, um, uh, there's a just called latest published version, which is what we've been calling the candidate spec. And there's a separate editor's draft. So uh, moving on, what I want to do is make sure that anything that we're kind of uh, is under discussion or review by the group is in the editor's draft initially and then when we're happy with it then we push it out into the candidate spec um, so that then people have a reason um, a slightly more stable uh, specification to uh, start implementing against um, and what I want so that's just starting to think about how we formalize our process a little bit um, uh, moving forward um, and what I, what I want to try and do is get into a habit of where we've uh, agreed some changes that go into the editor's draft that we try and review those on our next hangout or at least set a uh, two, three week review period um, to get any, any comments or otherwise it will be pushed out. Um, so the, the last uh, set of revisions kind of bundle up some of the discussions we've had uh, in the last couple of calls. So there's some new properties uh, and I've also documented um, a couple of schema.org properties which have proved to be uh, useful. Um, so the new properties, uh, we've, there's a new, there's a new uh, way to describe attendee instructions. So you can add a, a, the attendee instructions property to an event to capture any additional information for attendees. So things like things that they might want to bring with them uh, or notes on how to uh, find the event, find the venue over and above um, the, the existing location information or the description that's provided um, uh, for the event as a whole. Uh, so that was one thing that we discussed. Um, we also now have a separate property to indicate the personal organization that is leading the event. Um, so that's as distinct from the organizer or the contributor. Um, then there are a couple of properties um, that help describe the uh, disability support available at an event. Um, there's a general documentation property, which I've called accessibility information. 
So that's where you can put a general statement about um, support available um, at the events or uh, notes on how somebody might want, uh, might contact the organizer um, if they have any questions or, or requirements. Uh, and then there's an accessibility support uh, property which allows you to tag the event um, uh, with some of the terminology that we were discussing previously. Um, I just want to show you an example of how that looks. Um, it's a very simple property. Um, bear with me. Yeah, okay, so this is the new section 558 in the spec. Um, the, the two new properties are given an example here. Um, so there's the accessibility information, which is just the text, and the accessibility support can be one or more tags. So this is the terms that we were discussing last time. So things like hearing impairment, visual impairment, etc. Um, so we discussed whether to turn this into a more formal, formally defined control vocabulary. Um, while I think that is something that we should be working towards, I haven't done it for this first uh, revision to the spec. The reason for doing that is there was a lot of discussion around um, whether these terms are the right things that we should be encouraging the sector to use, or whether there's uh, other terms that um, might be more useful or descriptive um, for people attending events. So I've got, just gone with a kind of a simplest edition at the minute of just uh, documenting the property and encouraging people to use whatever uh, tags and terminology, sorry, tags or categories they're currently using. And then I think um, after a bit of experience to seeing what people are using in practice and what is actually useful for uh, participants, then we can start to formalize that. Um, I think if we do it too early, then there's a risk that it, it will seem like that we're recommending this as these uh, categories as the right things to do. Whereas I think the situation is it, this is just what, what people have opted to use for reporting requirements. Um, so that's just kind of balancing with the feedback that we had um, earlier on. Um, the other things I've done is um, documented a couple of uh, schema.org properties uh, which cover uh, firstly, event availability. Um, so uh, the schema has a property uh, called maximum attendee capacity, which is used to indicate how many people uh, can attend an event. And there's also a remaining capacity property. Um, so that gives some way to indicate um, maximum and current availability. Um, so those are just existing things that we've just highlighted as potentially being useful. Um, I've had one bit of feedback on this already, which is that um, some people may be reluctant to give hard figures for current um, availability, and it, we may just need a we may need a separate property that just says whether there is availability or not, some kind of broad uh, classification. Um, but that doesn't preclude people also kind of using this these existing properties because they're available. Um, the other one that I've documented is event status. So how do we indicate if an event has been canceled, for example? So again, schema.org has some terminology for this. So it has uh, event status, um, and that can refer to one of four values. We can say that an event is canceled, postponed, whether it's been rescheduled, uh, and the default value is just scheduled. So it's available for people to sign up to. Um, so, those are the revisions. Um, I wanted to see whether anyone had any feedback on those, whether there was any concerns or comments, or whether you're happy for that to just get pushed out into the, the latest spec. Uh, hi, Lee. Um, the only feedback I have on it is uh, around the uh, number of spaces left uh, in a, at an event uh, in terms of when it's a scheduled event uh, that is uh, probably not the best way for us to represent that data but uh, I don't quite know how we would represent that easily at the moment uh, when it's a scheduled event with multiple instances of the event um, you start getting into all sorts of other issues so yeah 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 I mean that 
but yeah, it seems like there's a, there is a much more detailed conversation to have around availability. Um, but I think I just wanted to indicate that those those properties were available. But, but no, but it's, I mean, they're not. I've uh, I've marked them both as um, optional, so there's no expectation that you'll, you'll have to require have to provide them. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? I've got a couple of questions, Lee. Yeah. Um, so the first is around accessibility information. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was, so am I right to understand this is attributed to the event rather than the um, venue? So this piece, piece of information describes the event and um, accessibility to where it's located. Uh, both of these properties are defined as being uh, about an event. Yeah. So it's not about, it's not about the accessibility of the location. Okay. And has that come from, um, have we seen that before anywhere where that's been attributed to an event rather than attributed to the venue? Yeah. Uh, so that was, in, that was in some of the properties that um, Jade was sharing that they said that they'd had reviewed um, that the recommendation they have was, was to have, a category uh, and to have um, a catch-all kind of uh, documentation field um, mm -hmm. and then in addition to that they're capturing wheelchair accessibility of locations which mm -hmm. I haven't included yet. Okay great yeah thanks for clarifying that. Um, my other question was about the um, session leader field and uh, my question was are we allowing the um, the, the person you would contact about a session to find out more. Um, it, certainly with open sessions, that can be different from the organization sort of general contact number or email address. So often um, they want to provide another, a contact who's um, specific, a specific person in that organization. Not necessarily though the session leader, um, they, they can often be different. But do we allow that in the current um, formulation? So, um, um, so with it, so just to make sure I understand, it, this is somebody at the the organising organisation um, to contact. Yeah. So, it, because there, there is a way to specify that in schema.org, because we say so. Uh, what we've said is that an event has an organiser, and an organiser can either be a person or an organisation. So a company um, and in schema.org you can specify the contact point for an organization so what I would suggest is you use the contact point there great okay I'll look into that so contact point okay okay sorry Lee, just to clarify on that I think one of the things around if it's around the disability stuff that Carol said last week is all the other week is that you know the disability contact is probably the most important person that they need require as much as the categorization so it's making sure that that contact is almost as ben as i said may be separate from a, the actual session lead that might be a disability contact for the whole of the center or event who would probably be able to provide that specific information uh okay Okay. Yeah, I'm just thinking about what that actually what that would look like. Whether we whether we need to have separate, yeah, so separate named two two different named contacts potentially for the organisation or a venue. Well, it could be one or the same, but I mean, it depends on whether they are. I think what she was saying is that you know they. A person will look at it, take the take some of that information, but you know it's very different from a person being. If you say it, it works for, you know, a kind of physical impairment is completely different between someone who's in a wheelchair to someone who might not have a hand or have some other issue. And so the likelihood is they're always going to follow up with some phone call. So it's how is who is the best person to phone at that, you know, wherever that place is that event is taking place. Yeah. And so that could be, if if that was a, it could be the it could be the the main number but it could be a completely separate number who has that kind of information and it's just being clear in that kind of guidance that sits around that yeah so i think what what i was leaning towards was um so this this i still need to revise the primer to kind of include a, a specific some specific guidance around this 
but I thought, <coughs> excuse me, um, I thought that those kind of instructions would go into the accessibility information um, so that there's a place to kind of put that, um, you know, it might, so that some, you know, somebody who's going to be attending could read it uh, and then take appropriate steps. Um, because I, I wasn't sure about creating a more, um, more structured way to do it, to you know, designate a uh, accessibility contact separate from a general contract, because I'm not sure that people have that captured in their systems currently. No, I think that's fine. I think it just needs to be, it's that good practice bit, as we said before, that sits around that kind of instruction. So as long as that's clear, I think, I think that's fine. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, any other thoughts? No. Okay. Well, um, what I'm going to do then is I'll um, uh, I'll put a follow up on the list and ask uh, uh, anyone who isn't on the call today to try and give us some feedback uh, by when I do the end of the week. I'd like to kind of move it forward. Um, so that is good. Um, so the the other thing that I wanted to talk about um, and. Uh, Please uh, stop me as as I'm walking through these next steps. I didn't want it to, didn't want it to just be a kind of presentation or a monologue for me. Um, what I'm trying to do here is kind of validate um, some of my thinking about um, uh, how we move forward in terms of finalising the specs and doing some extensions. So um, yeah, so very, but this is not just a lecture. Um, so. Um, been doing some thinking about what it means to extend the specification. <clears throat> um, we already have uh, quite a wordy section in the spec around extension points already. Um, but um, the reason why I want to kind of just uh, run through this is uh, firstly, a, a few publishers that are starting to um, uh, publish according to the spec are finding areas where um, the spec doesn't include some data that they can't currently capture and they're wondering about how to provide that if they want to make it available as open data. So um, we, we need to have some guidance in place for uh, people who are going beyond what we've currently agreed to standardise. Um, extension points in general are a good practice for standards um, because it allows people to, to customise it uh, for their own needs, um, which means that it uh, encourages people to adopt a standard and then customize it rather than just saying, okay, this doesn't fit our needs, so we're going to go away and create something else. Um, so we kind of you know, need to identify where these, um, you know, uh, where our work has kind of completed to begin with and then where people can start to build, build around it. Um, and then obviously if we're starting to work towards a more kind of formal release, then we need to make sure that um, uh, people are clear on, on what, what those extension points are um, because you know they might need to be doing things to their own schedule versus what we're doing in, in the standardization process so to um i wanted to kind of recap the, the extension points that that we have currently um that people can use uh, and just guess get some thoughts from you all on whether these make sense um, so, so firstly, the, this, this process, this standardization process itself is a, is a means of extending the specification. So, um, you know, we expect the standard to change over time. Um, it's been changing relatively quickly over the last few months as we've been um, working on drafts. But over time, I'm expecting that the changes will be less frequent because we're going to work on a more uh, uh, scheduled kind of release process process for, for the, the standard specification. So you know, moving to more kind of three, six month or even annual releases, depending on the, the level of changes. So one way that people can, can get the specification extended is to engage with the community group and the kind of process that we've, we've got in place now. Um, the other place of extension, um, which we're, I think we've been using quite a bit already, um, is um, making more, more use of schema.org. So um, it's got uh, quite a rich uh, set of properties for describing events, organizations, et cetera. Um, and a lot of the requirements that have come up recently, um, I've been able to kind of point people at relevant bits of schema.org that, that help describe um, the things they need to do. So contact points, as we've just seen, but also yesterday, um, showing how people can describe um, 
uh, you know, uh, set collections of images that are associated with an event or, or an organization. So there's support for all that kind of stuff in the spec already. So we don't have to standardize all that stuff. We've kind of documented in the spec that people can uh, feel free to use anything um, that's, that makes sense from schema.org. Um, today, I've been um, documenting the most useful ones in the spec itself, but I think uh, in future, it would probably make sense to um, to just uh, document those those kind of usage patterns in the primer and the supporting guidance, um, rather than putting them into the core spec, so that the the core spec starts to just focus on the bits that are specific to the sector, rather than just highlighting useful sections of schema.org. Um, and the the third way that um, people can um, uh, extend the spec is to is basically to create their own custom schema or specification so we, we discussed this kind of stuff i think early on in that, that there may be some applications or some um communities within the sector that want to focus on creating some more detailed guidance um, that's relevant for them <clears throat> so um uh say somebody interested in orienteering might want to be able to have um, uh, a schema that allows them to describe waypoints around a orienteering course and some of the information that goes with those. Or the cyclists might want to focus on um, some quite detailed um, uh, standards around describing cycling tracks. So not all of that will, will make it into the core modeling spec. Um, but the, the work on developing those schemas could happen within this group. So we can break out subgroups that are focusing on um, particular areas. Um, and individual publishers or applications can also just define their own, their own terminology. So I need to put together a bit of guidance around that, but there's, um, um, people, could need, people could do this already. Um, and a couple of, I think a couple of publishers are starting to look at where they might want to do this. Um, and obviously all this kind of builds, builds on one another. So we might find that some custom schema or um, specification that people are creating is more widely available. And so we might want to make it a part of the core standard um, so that the, we can expect there to be some sort of changes over time. Um, so there's, there's quite a lot, of the, we can get into quite a lot of complexity here quite quite quickly um, but really it's just I think what we need to do at the moment is make sure that there's some ground rules in place so people understand um, how they can how they can ask for changes to the core spec how they can draw on schema.org how they can create their own custom extensions and then as a community as we've got to move on from here um, we can be um, we can we can look at uh, what customizations people are doing and whether there should be some more process around them. Um, so just to stop there before I, I carry on, does that, does that make sense to people? Does that seem like a, a reasonable set of um, criteria? Uh, just on, on the first one, changing the spec, I mean, is there, is there, should there be any statement on backwards compatibility over time and, and whether or not how that might be dealt with. Yeah, that's good. That's a good point. Yeah, I think um, as we move to, uh, I guess, a, a kind of more formally version release, then there needs to be, a, um, it needs to be clear what, if there are any breaking changes. Um, I, I'm kind of expecting that we'll, we might continue to work on editor's draft as an ongoing piece of work, but there it will be, um, uh, yeah, it will be kind of, I guess, buyer beware if you're, if you're trying to, if you're tracking the, the bleeding edge of the specification. I mean, I think we should be trying for backwards compatibility as much as, as, much as possible. You know, I'd, I'd prefer to deprecate properties and define replacements rather than changing their meaning over time, which might impact, um, impact applications. So, but yeah, you're right. There needs to be a clearer, uh, clearer definition, some clearer terminology and description of that in the spec. Any other comments, Ben or Raymond? All seems good to me. 
Okay. Okay. Cool. Right. Um, and I'll, um, like I said, there's, there's, there's a section in the spec on this already, um, but I, I'm going to make some, some changes just to kind of cl uh, clarify these, these steps and what's involved just to, so that people feel a bit more confident about, um, what the, what's involved, what they need, might need to do from a kind of process and from a technical point of view. So, um, moving on, so getting towards a, a kind of version released, so kind of 1.0, I've got that in quotes because um, some discussion about what, what that should be, but um, uh, how, how do we get to a kind of a stable release? So, um, so having a, a clearly labeled uh, stable spec is going to help, I think, build some confidence in coach adoption. There's been, I think, a couple of people have, uh, a couple of publishers have been asking at what point we're going to get to that so they can uh, have confidence that they can implement against the standard without, it, without there being any breaking changes or, or, or other impacts on them. Um, as a group, I think it will help give us a clear milestone to kind of focus um, uh, any kind of remaining work that we need to do on the, the modeling specification in particular. So I think there's, there's three things that we need to kind of think about. There's what it is that we're actually kind of releasing. So what our deliverables are, um, uh, you know, and what we feel comfortable about you know, putting a 1.0 label on now and what we might want to label uh, just as, or keep as draft. Um, what the process is, so I just want to quickly take you through the, um, the process as far as the W3C define it. Um, and then we also need to think about whether there's any important kind of outstanding issues that we need to address before we're comfortable in saying, okay, this is a, um, you know, we're going we're gonna to rubber stamp this as a, as a 1.0 release. So what I, what I would like to do is to get us to 1.0 for some of the deliverables uh, by the end of June. Um, so think about process initially, just so that we, we've got some terminology. Um, as a W3C community group, uh, the W3C recommends that we follow um, some fairly lightweight process. Um, but they, um, they allow a community group to publish um, uh, deliverables, which are either draft specifications uh, or what they call a formal specification so everything we've produced so far is a is, is from from a w3c point of view is a draft specification um, but we've been labeling our uh, opportunity data uh, spec as a candidate specification to indicate that it's a, a relatively stable basis to work on um, and as I was saying just now I've added an editor's draft to give us a bit of um, a bit of leeway to to iterate on some of the wording and some of the content separately from what people are building against. Um, but the, the next step on from a draft, from a W3C point of view, is what they call a formal specification, um, which uh, when you promote one of your drafts to be a formal spec, um, it gets published at a W3C domain. So it'll be available at w3.org rather than um, uh, openactive.io. Um, you also can't change it once it's been released. You can release new versions, so you can go from 1.0 to 1.1 and promote those, but once version 1.0 is, is released, your, the intention is you shouldn't change it. Um, and they also ask for some uh, endorsement and sign off from the community, so from the community group members. Um, I've asked them to clarify what exactly this means because there is a um, uh, there is a statement I think that they've they ask people to to sign to to kind of basically say that they're happy with the specification and that it's free of um, kind of uh, IP issues. The idea being is that it potentially that they can then take that formal specification as input into um, uh, into their other standardization processes. So we've got our candidate spec as a draft spec at the moment. So what I'm proposing is we move it to be a formal spec if everyone is happy um, at doing that. Um, I'm not 
uh, in terms of this kind of process, I'm not really thinking about anything, anything we put in place around tooling, data validators, data validators, et cetera, because I think they'll just have their own release processes as bits of software. Um, so I started last week working on, on some uh, validation code and, and schemas. So as a group, our deliverables, uh, we've got several. So we've got um, a couple of uh, draft specifications at the moment. There's the modeling spec, there's the paging spec, and there's the open active namespace. So what I'm proposing is that we, um, we work towards um, turning those three into formal 1.0 releases. So a formal specification in W3C terminology. Um, uh, I don't think we're, we're close to, the, to doing that for the activity list yet, um, but I want to kind of move to getting a, a uh, getting that from what is still an internal working document to being a draft specification that we're going to we're happy for people to start trying to use. Um, and then the opportunity, opportunity data primer, I, I'm kind of calling that a perennial draft because um, I think we want freedom to keep iterating on that um, because it, that's where we put our kind of tutorial and guidance information. So I think it's less important for that to go through the kind of formal formal process because we'll just want to change it as issues come up. We want to clarify some of the guidance. So really it's, it's kind of these three specs that um, I'm thinking that we, we could probably move to 1.0 fairly quickly. Um, uh, and the reason, reason I think we can do that is because I think that those specifications are uh, pretty stable. So people have been implementing the paging spec for a few months now. Um, uh, with, and so I've been providing feedback on that. There's a, there's a number of open issues around that specification, but a lot of them are enhancements rather than uh, issues with the spec itself. Um, the modeling spec, so we've had dis ongoing discussions in this group and over the last few weeks, people have been implementing it, um, but there haven't been any, any major issues. Um, so there's been no kind of structural issues with the spec that people saying actually the, you know, the, the basic relationships between events and places and activities, etc., is wrong. So the, structurally it seems fine that what, what's been coming up is the need for um, additional properties in a few places. Um, a number of those uh, are already covered by schema.org and there's only been one or two really that where well, I think three where um, we've had to add them to the, the draft spec as custom custom properties. So um, on that basis I think we're in a, in a reasonable spot and I think I kind of trying to focus on getting that done by the end of June um, is achievable. Um, but the kind of big question for, for you guys and for the rest of the people on the, on the community group is, are there other areas that we think are vital to get, so missing properties that we think are vital to get into the specification now, um, or uh, you know, can, can they wait for uh, later standardization work? So it's kind of not. So the only thing I was going to say, I don't think it's, it's, I don't think it's, we need to do it now, but it's one of these things that we need, whether it, it includes in the, the, the information that goes out, for example, facilities, you know, we talked about if we're going to move on to booking, then at some point you're going to have to look at facilities because Jamie's issue around how you look at um, all sports halls being different sizes, have different, Flaws, or they've got marked out the badminton courts. Actually, we're going to have to get into a bit more detail around facilities, but I don't think it's it's necessary now. But it's one of these things that we might want to start mapping out some roadmap to go with this for the next phases. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, that also leads on from my. Uh, yeah, from my point earlier where uh, we uh, need to look in the future into how we're going to uh, model the actual uh, spaces that are still that are still free uh, for for each of the scheduled events because <clears throat> um, that also uh, falls hand in hand uh, with your 
per session scheduling uh, as to how many facilities you have, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, so no, it might be it might be that when we publish, we need to put a kind of a kind of we need to probably think maybe oh there's anything like an FAQ that goes with it. So where you're getting people are coming almost telling them what what we've done, what we haven't done, and some of the reasons for it. So then we kind of we kind of anticipating the kind of queries that are going to come back in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that also needs to. Um, this is why I um, want to be clear what the extension point is as well so that we can say to people here's how you can build on it but also here's how we are planning to kind of you know this is our roadmap for how we're planning to evolve this further within the group as it goes into engage um, okay so that's that's one area where we know that we we currently haven't kind of addressed all of the use cases um is there anything else I mean, it, it kind of feels like the core kind of events and event location, physical activity stuff seems pretty, pretty well understood. Um, does everyone agree? Yeah, I think Lee, it's, it's just, I suppose it's just checking ourselves on, you know, this is opportunity data and have we covered off, we haven't missed anything obvious, you know, in the what, where, when, how, kind of those key questions that a consumer might ask. Mm -hmm. But I think I think when you look at it, I think we probably have covered most things. Most things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so I think um, again, I'll uh, I'll put that to to the list so that we're not just making the the decision here. Um, uh, and I think I'll frame it in that terminology. You know, that that kind of do what, where, when, how. Um, I think we I think we do tick everything off, but it'd be a useful useful test. Um, okay. Um, oh, sorry, I was just distracted looking at the opportunity data diagram in the in the spec. Um, I mean, really, we only talks about events, activities, locations, and facilities, and we've got some description of facilities in terms of basic locations, but it's not the detail that you were just talking to on the the availability that goes with them. Okay. okay. Any other comments on that? No. Okay. Um, so the kind of last thing that I wanted to just uh, talk about was the the activity list. Um, so I. So after we discussed it on the last call, um, I, I summarized the discussion and what I thought, thought some of the next steps um, should be. Um, uh, in particular, I asked people to um, give some feedback on the current list in the, in the spreadsheet. And I also circulated some editorial guidance for the comment. Um, I haven't had any feedback on that yet. So I, um, I'd like to ask all of you to just kind of take a look at those uh, documents in a bit more detail. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, just provide some feedback. Um, in particular, on the editorial guidelines and guidance, because I think that will help us frame the scope um, in terms of what what, con what the contents of the list should be, uh, how it should be structured. Um, I'll show you what that looks like in a minute, just so you can you can take a bit look. Um, cause, but I think we can then use that to guide some of the other other activities. Um, there, there's some uh, particular areas of the, the spreadsheet uh, that need some contributions. So we still need descriptions in, in for a number of the activities, um, and I think some of the labelling could do with a with a review. Um, so, uh, as well as just kind of asking you all for feedback on there, I think there's there's a couple of suggestions I have trying to trying to move it forward. Um, firstly, I think it would be useful to try and find some way to validate the list in terms of how useful it is in terms of the kind of coverage and content. Um, and I think probably the best way to do that would be to compare it against um, what people are currently using um, in, in their systems. So um, uh, what I'm thinking we, we, can, we can go away and do, um, which I, I can probably find, 
either find some time to do or, or coordinate with somebody to, to get done, is to take the current list that Kim uh, and the others put together uh, and see how well it stacks up against some of the data from open sessions, um, the GLL open data, uh, and perhaps some of the other sources, just to see how well it aligns, um, at least in terms of coverage. Um, so we can get a sense of, you know, is it kind of uh, covering the, the core use cases of the kind of activities that people, uh, people need to tag up and describe. Um, um, so that's one. <coughs> Sorry, Lee, uh, be, just before you go uh, much further, um, on that front, I know that uh, Data Hub uh, have, have, have spent a, a lot of time working on this sort of thing. Um, and um, after our last meeting, I, I mailed uh, a, um, a few of the guys down there and I have got their list uh, that they use. Uh, and I, yeah, I just need to find some time for me to um, try and match that list up to what we've currently got. I know that their list has got a, a, a fair number of the missing fields that we've got uh, and things like that. So, um, yeah, that should help us fill in quite a, quite a few of the blanks uh, and will also help us uh, just see how well it fits because they have built that list up uh, from, all, from all the systems that have been feeding into Data Hub, which is a huge number of... So, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, well, um, we've separately, been separately speaking to them, trying to, uh, uh, to, ID to get them engaged in this process, because like you say, they've already put a great deal of work into what they have. Uh, if they were willing to publish that openly, then it would give us a, another starting point. Um, so, yeah, we need to find some ways to bring them into to this activity to build on what they've done. Um, um, you know, I don't mind asking them if they want to share it publicly. Uh, they don't seem to mind. Uh, they are actually on the board and everything, so yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's just they haven't been on, you know, on these these calls. If if they're happy to at least share um, the list, because I think they sent me a copy as well. If they were happy to share the the PDF just with the group so that we could see it, that would be, I think, a useful reference point, even if it's not. Um, you know, formally published as, as open data. Um, I, th I, I caught up uh, briefly with uh, Jade as well. She said that she'd spoken to uh, UK Active and they previously, they've, they've just recently gone through the process of, I think, uh, standardizing their list against um, the Data Hub one. Um, so yeah, it is obviously being used by quite a few people. Um, so um, as well as doing that kind of validation work and trying to get them on board. Um, I was going to propose that we get a few people together for a face-to-face uh, -face meeting uh, to discuss the activity list in, in more detail. So I think it'd be better just to get a few people around the table and um, revise the list. And if, you know, if we're, assuming we're not going to draw on the data hubs, then just to revise the list that we have to kind of just kind of thrash out some of the the missing areas, the structure, the terminology. Um, I think it would be, be a, a better way to do it than trying to do it on these these calls um, or just doing it independently online. So I was going to try and get people together for a face-to-face -face meeting, um, uh, probably the week commencing the 12th of June. Um, it will probably be in London, um, which might make it more or less accessible for some of you. Um, so it'll be a open invite, um, just be limited by, uh, whatever meeting room I can get at the ODI. But, um, I think a few people around the table would help us kind of push this on quite quickly. Um, does that seem reasonable to people? Uh, anyone here are particularly keen to come to that? I yeah. would be keen. Uh, I am just not sure if I am free that week or not. So. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, again, I'll, I'll mail out uh, uh, an invite to see who, who wants to come along. Um, yeah, so I'm keen to make it an open process and let everyone uh, pitch in, but also make the meeting, uh, meeting size uh, reasonable so we don't end up with 20 people in a room. Uh, okay. Um, really, that was, that was the kind of, um, that was the things that I kind of wanted to raise with everyone today. Um, I apologize, it's been me largely kind of talking about planning. Um, 
but uh, any any other feedback or any other business things that people want to raise this afternoon? Um, okay. can, can I ask for information, and apologies, I've been out of the loop a bit. Um, you say we've got a couple of people publishing against this. Is, is there anyone consuming the data on a trial basis from what, more than one publisher at the moment? Uh, there are people, uh, who, there are some people who've started to consume it, yeah. I mean, I think I'm in a definitely consuming the data. Um, I Correct. don't have a list of... Um, Great. So that kind of confirms that they're not interpreting the same property differently across different organisations. Yeah. I think there's only, there's only a small number that. So there's there's been a number of people that have been publishing open data for Open Active for for a few months, but they've started to now adopt the the standard data model as a way to structure their data. Um, and GLL, which went live last I think it was last week, um, uh, are using it as well. Thanks. But the feedback's been pretty good so far. Most people seem to have been able to pick it up uh, relatively, relatively easily. Brilliant. Um, okay, unless there's any other questions or things that people want to raise, we can probably wrap up uh, a bit earlier today. Um, in terms of our next next meetings, um, I can't. Um, I'm away, so I can't do the seventh of June. So we won't we won't hold one um, in two weeks' time. Um, but the, like I said, the following week is when I'll, I'll try and get the activity list face-to-face uh, -face meeting uh, sorted. Um, and we still have uh, one scheduled for the 21st of June, so in a month from now. So if, if things proceed as, as, a, as a planned, then we could be using that as a kind of check-in to see whether we're, we're happy to, to push the button on um, 1.0 release for some of those specifications. So, okay then, um, I think I'll wrap it up at this point. Um, so as I say, I'll follow up on the email, email with uh, invites to that face-to-face -face meeting and a few prompts for people um, to give feedback on the spec and the, the move to 1.0. So um, thanks to everyone for, for coming along and anyone who's watching the, the video on YouTube. All right, cheers guys. Thanks Lee. Bye.